Okay, the other place that E is most commonly used is in financial stuff, uh, specifically if we're going to do compounding interest, but we compound continuously. Okay, con continuously compounded interest uses E. Um, otherwise, you're going to be compounding annually, biannually, quarterly, monthly, that kind of stuff. That uses a different formula. But if it's compounded continuously, which will be in this section of the book for right now, we get to the other ones again. I think that involves the other difficulty of problems. So they're probably going to stick to continuously at this point. The compounded continuous problem looks like this. The final amount of money, P sub T, equals the initial amount of money, P sub zero, E to the RT power. Does that look familiar? What is, what is P sub T? P's for principal. principal. The principal balance in the account. Principal is how much money you have. It's also like the person who is in head of the, the head of the school is a principal. It's a different type of principal. But when you talk about investing money, the amount of money you put into the account is called the principal, and the um, a balance also, I mean, is what you end up with. But anyway, initial principal, final principal, e to the rt power. Does that formula look familiar at all? I believe so. If that was an a and that was a and that was k, does it look familiar? Yeah. Yeah. They're exactly the same formula. They're the same formula. All right. So before we had to figure out what k equal, right? Yeah. R is the interest rate. So what we're looking at here is we need to know the initial amount of money invested. We need to know the interest rate as a decimal. And we need to know the amount of time in years. So when you do continuously compounding, you do want time to be in years. That's a necessity. So this has to be something years. This has to be a decimal right here. So we'll worry about that in a moment. So first off. Roger deposited $5,000. What you deposit into the account is the initial principal. So how much money we started off with is $5,000. At an interest rate of 7.5%, okay, now pay close attention to this, 7.5% is equal to 0 0.075. If you put 0.75 for 7.5%, that's 75%. I want to go find out what bank you run later on in life. I'm going to invest my money in your bank because I'm going to be rich and you're going to be poor. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how much. I'll show you in a moment if we did the wrong interest rate, how much money we'd have after 10 years in your bank as opposed to what Roger's going to get in his bank. All right, so anyway, and he's investing it for 10 years. By the way, 7.5% interest rate is actually a really good interest yeah, rate. I think right good. now it's like about 1.2 or something. Yeah, that's it's pretty, pretty small that's pretty good. for investing. So if you can get a 7.5% interest rate, that's actually a really good interest rate. Just so you can like to know where you're going. So what we have is exactly the value of the initial amount. We know what the R is, what the K value, the constant is, and we know what T equals. So if we take a look at what we're looking for, how much money we have in 10 years equals what we started off with e to the point zero seven five times 10 years. All right? And, and we're basically at the same point we were after we found k on the other problems, right? We already know what k is, so we're ready just to evaluate. The other thing they might ask you is, um, when will Roger have $10,000? Put 10,000 here, then you've got to find this number up here, then it's going to work more like the finding the k on the other problems was. All right, so if we take a look over here, if I type in 5,000 times E to the point 0 0.075 times 10, that comes out to $10,585.00. And zero zero cents. $10,585. Always round money to the nearest cent. Even if it's zero cents, put zero, zero, so I know that you've gone through the trouble of thinking about that. All right. Now, had Roger gone to a bank with a 75% interest rate, just to give you an idea, so if you put 0 0.75 instead of 0 0.075, it's just one decimal place, right? It shouldn't be that big of a difference. $9,040,212.07. So again, I want to go to your bank if you don't know how to change percents to decimals correctly, because I'll be rich. It'll take me one year to make as much as Roger made in 10. Yeah. And in 10 years, I'll make $90 million. So that's awesome. That's quite impressive. So keep that in mind as you're working these. A single, des a single digit here puts a zero, point zero that number. If it's double digits, if it's a 10%, point one zero, like that. So just be careful with the single digit percents if you change to a decimal correctly. 